Hello everybody, Mitch Steele here, and I'm on my way to go do a boat tour. This is what I would call a compact cruiser, because it offers all of the features that you want in a boat to sail open oceans, but in a well-designed and compact form factor. Claire de Lune is a Union 32 built in 1984 and designed by Ted Brewer. She was built at the Union Yacht Company shipyard in Taipei, Taiwan, where other popular boats like the Robert Perry design Union 36 were built. The Union 32 design was also sold under the names EO 32 or East Orient 32 and the Shearwater 32. The Union 32 is cutter rigged and it has a fin keel with a skeg hung rudder. Like my boat, La Mer, the fin keel is modified with a longer and more horizontal surface area than a traditional fin keel, which usually allows for better upwind sailing. The downside is that reversing can be a bit of a challenge. I'm not sure if the Union 32 would have the same issue due to it being smaller and somewhat lighter than the Mer. Based on the technical specs of the Union 32, Claire de Lune looks like she'd be a safe and comfortable blue water cruiser with a moderate displacement to length ratio of just under 254. She also scores well in the capsize screening formula at just below the desired upper limit of two. Okay, let's get a closer look. As we walk down the port side, the hull and deck are in really good condition. The non-skid was recently coated with flattened topside and looks almost brand new. There's a large number of stainless opening port lights all around the cabin top. Great for ventilation and light, which we'll really get to appreciate once we go inside. The gunnels are capped with teak, which are unvarnished, but extremely well maintained. At the bow, there are two anchors, a CQR and a Danforth. It's nice to have the option that both designs give you. Here on the central coast of California, the Danforth anchor is pretty common as they hold well in the sandy bottoms that you'll often find at many anchorages around here. There's also a double bow roller to accommodate them. The windlass is manual with both horizontal chain gypsy and capstan. The jib furler is made by Harkin. The owner removes the jib sail and stores it to keep it out of the sun during long periods of non-use. On the boom, there is a new stack pack and lazy jack system. There is what looks to be a Garhauer rigid boom vang. The single spreader mast has steps that go all the way up the entire length of the mast, making the unenviable chore of going aloft safer and easier. And there you see the radar dome. As I mentioned, the Union 32 is cutter rigged, but Claire de Lune's staysail stay has been removed. Sailing conditions here on the central coast of California don't necessitate the need of a staysail. And unless you're routinely sailing in heavy winds, it's often preferred to remove the staysail stay, making tacking of the jib much easier. The nice thing about Claire de Lune is there is a staysail boom and track for self-tacking for when the stay is attached. Going aft, we come to the cockpit. Claire de Lune has a canoe stern and the cockpit echoes the shape of the stern, giving it a real roomy feel. The combing around the cockpit is capped with teak, which is also unvarnished, but surprisingly fresh looking. The owner does a meticulous job of keeping the teak clean and free of dirt. The helm has a classic style wood wheel with a comfortable stainless outer ring. The binnacle houses the engine controls and the compass as you'd expect. There's a convenient bar for hanging onto in rough seas or an ideal place to mount some electronics. On the forward side, there is a folding cockpit table for outdoor dining or relaxing with cocktails. A fairly recent addition to this boat is the Hydrovane self-steering vane, which was added in 2018. This is a great feature to have on long voyages. Personally, I believe that the Hydrovane is the best self-steering system on the market, mainly because of its ease of use, quality construction, 
limitless installation options, and perhaps most important is that it can be used as an emergency rudder if your main rudder fails. This is the system that I plan on installing on the mare. On the cabin top, there is a housing for a small chart plotter. The line handling setup is pretty simple, a winch and cleat on either side of the cabin. The jib sheets are managed by Lumar self-tailing winches on both the port and starboard cockpit combing. And fully aft is access to a locker that houses the steering quadrant and through hulls for the engine exhaust and cooling system. And here are the backing plates for the hydrovane mounts. These really look heavy duty. Just under the companionway is another locker which stores the propane tank, regulator, and solenoid. You can't get much easier access to your propane tank than this. While not new, the Dodger is in pretty decent condition. On top is a 100 watt flexible solar panel which was installed in 2019, along with a new charge controller. All right, it's time to head down below. As we climb down the companionway ladder, we have the galley on our port side. It's a U-shaped galley, a bit on the small side, but still very functional. Towards the back, there is a counter with a top-loading refrigerator with a new isotherm cooling unit. Above that is storage for plates and whatnot. Over here is some more storage for pantry items and a nice spice rack with an easy reach. There is additional dry storage under the sink counter for dry goods. The stove and oven is a Gimbal Dickinson unit with a two-burner stovetop. There's a nice cage surrounding the top that helps keep your pots and pans from sliding off. And the oven looks really clean. Facing forward is a double well stainless steel sink. Looking at the cabinet below, I see a manifold system. I believe this is to switch between the port and starboard water tanks that are under the settees on either side of the salon. There is a combined 60 gallons of water on board. Additionally, there are foot pumps that allow you to pump in raw water for rinsing dishes, which helps save on your fresh water supply. Looking around, you can see how bright and open the space is. There's plenty of light coming in from the multiple opening port lights, and the headliner has just recently been replaced with new beadboard, and it looks great. Opposite of the galley is the navigation station. There's a good amount of storage for charts, cruising guides, and electronics. The original panel houses both the 12 volt and 115 volt circuits. Aft of the nav station is the quarter berth that will sleep one person comfortably. It's a little tight getting in and out because of the navigation table, but it's manageable. As with all of the upholstery on Claire de Lune, it's been refreshed. Back there is a panel which gives you access to the back side of the engine and prop shaft. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the engine compartment. Claire de Lune is powered by a recently reconditioned 28 horsepower, three cylinder Volvo 2003 diesel motor. It fits nicely in the compartment, offering plenty of space for servicing. Moving on to the main salon. I don't know if I've seen a fresher looking interior on a 37 year old boat. The teak is impeccable, the sole is in excellent condition and the cushions look showroom new. It's spacious and there's plenty of storage above and behind the settees. A feature that we don't normally see on a boat in California is the propane heater. But then I remember that the original hailing port for Claire de Lune was Bellingham, Washington. So this makes perfect sense. Nice thing about the heater is its compact size. It's really unobtrusive but I would imagine that it's more than sufficient to keep this boat warm and cozy. The dining table has two leafs that fold out so that you can dine on either or both sides of the boat. With both leafs up, you can comfortably seat four adults, possibly six. And when the leaves are down, you can easily move fore and aft. As I mentioned, there are stainless steel water tanks under both the port and starboard settings. Each are 30 gallons. And as shown earlier, you can switch between the tanks with the manifold under the galley sink. Let's keep moving forward. We have the head on the port side. The only sign of water damage I've seen so far is here on the door. 
It looks to be from an older leak, and it doesn't look to have been from above, as there is no sign of leaks anywhere. However, when I open the door to the head, I notice that on the inside of the door, there is the same stains. My guess is that this is from water hitting the inside of the door from the shower wand. This is one of the challenges when showering in these type of wet heads. You either need to point the shower head towards the toilet, which is kind of messy, or put up a shower curtain that covers the door to keep the water off. In any case, this does not look to be a current issue. The head is outfitted with a Japsco toilet with a hand pump. There's a sink, mirror, and storage. The teak grate at the bottom allows water to drain when taking a shower. Pretty straightforward stuff here. Okay, just before the entry to the V-berth, there's a hanging closet. Great place to store your wet gear. All right, moving on. The V-berth is inviting with its clean, warm wood and fresh, light-colored cushions. There's lots of storage and cubby holes. The large Lumar hatch brings lots of light into the space, even considering that the dinghy is sitting over the hatch. Nice thing about this hatch is it's large enough to pass through sails when changing them out, and a person can even climb out if need be in an emergency. While we're here, let's take a look at the chain locker. There's chain and road for both of the bow anchors, each coming through their own hawse pipe. I'd be curious to know how much these settle into their own piles when raising the anchors, or if you need someone down here to keep them from stacking up on top of each other. Nice thing is, there's plenty of space here for both sets of chain and road. Okay, let's head back. Boy, it sure is nice coming into such a bright and inviting salon. Here's another one of those large Lumar hatches. Let's take a look at some of the spaces under the sole. There's pretty good access to the bilge from a number of hatches, and they look pretty dry. What I notice is that the bilge is very shallow through much of the boat. What this means is that the floor is as close to the bottom of the hull as possible, giving you added headroom above. That's a good design. Okay, that's going to do it for this tour of Claire de Lune, a 1984 Union 32. She's a beautiful turnkey cruiser. I think this would be a terrific boat for a young couple starting out on their cruising adventure, or perhaps for a seasoned single-handed sailor looking for a sturdy, comfortable, and manageable blue water cruiser. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And I also welcome questions and comments. And if this is your first time to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. And while you're at it, click the notification button so you'll know when new videos are released. You all have a great day, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers.